conference. Uh, our first speaker is Arkady Zaitlin, and he will tell us about stepping up in higher speed theories. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I should thank the organizers again uh, for making the last part of the um, So, uh, what I would like to uh, talk about is some recent work on scattering embers in high speed theories, and this is a bit outside of the main uh, topic of uh, this conference, but it's about scattering amplitudes, though in very funny theories. Um, so, what I'm going to talk about is based on uh, some work done earlier uh, last year, and uh, the recent paper with Dmitry Manuel, who is here, and also there is a um, work which will appear for, with uh, my TV career as a student, Simon Nakic. And also we had some discussions with Ryan Urban, which are kind of in progress, which I'll mention. Um, I'll have time later. <coughs> so, uh, so why uh, high spins? So uh, we're familiar with massive high spin fields in, uh, in nature, in quantum physics, or in string theory. Uh, and in principle, one, my, my, one may wonder whether uh, one can get massless high spins in some uh, tensionless limit of string theory, uh, which is not very clear what it is, and it's hard to define uh, consistently in flat space. Uh, but in principle, I may ask the question what, whether such theory may exist in flat space, massless high speed. We certainly know such theory in ADS, and there is a big business uh, that is Brasilia constructed consistent uh, equations, interacting equations from, for the tower of high speeds in ADS. And uh, this theory plays an important role in Victorian ADS CFT. Uh, interestingly, there is a theory in flat space, which essentially, in the sense of the boundary of it, of uh, where the same, the same place where CFT lives, uh, which is non unitary but is very closely related to uh, massless high speed theory in ADS, and that's what's called conformal high speed theory. In a sense, it's, it, it can be viewed as kind of a shadow of. Um, we don't have a sources for the operators of conformity theory, as I'll discuss later. And in some sense, it's a shadow of this massless high spin theory. Yes. Uh, so these theories have uh, infinite dimensional uh, symmetry, global and uh, gauged symmetry. And uh, one may under, one wonder what's the implications for its matrix in particular. Uh, should it be trivial? And uh, that's what we may expect. Uh, on the basis of mass familiar theorems. Um, so if we have flat space uh, uh, theory with, with uh, high conserved charges, that's really constrained as me. So uh, I should say uh, what the main message will be, it's not clear whether we have mass disguise in theory in flat space, which is unitary and local, but we definitely have uh, this conformal high spin theory, which is non-unitary, so we have two, two consistent theories, uh, consistent in the sense of gauge invariance uh, and formal uh, uh, cubic quartic, etc. action. And these are, as I just said, uh, theory in ADS and uh, this conformal high speed theory. So I will mostly will be discussing conformal high speed theory and then uh, uh, comment at the end about mass, uh, conjectural masses, unitary masses, high speed theory in that space. Uh, so the main message will be that in this model theory, this matrix appears to be trivial. Indeed, it's constrained by high spin symmetry. But how this comes out uh, is, very, is, is essentially very non-trivial. It's a result of well, you can argue this on, on, on a symmetry basis, but as a in computation, it's a result of summation of which infinite number of exchanges of all this, uh, tower of high spin. So as I just said, uh, the aim, uh, eventual aim would be uh, to understand whether the reason mass is high spin theory or for second derivative of Lagrangian in uh, Lagrangian in flat space. And again here, uh, what the message which we learn from this conformal high spin theory, so presumably if there is such a theory and if it's local and if it has a high uh, symmetry, this matrix should be in some sense trivial. The reality may mean many things. It may mean vanishing uh, or generic momentum, but uh, maybe some non-trivial. Um, they might not be 
is happening in Latvia. But before I get to that, uh, let me just say a few words about free theories, just a collection of free Lagrangian for higher spins, which uh, just discussing a uh, thousand of these uh, higher spins, where I should emphasize, I will always have in mind the theory which contains all, all spins from, say, from zero to infinity because that's what naturally appears in the context of consistent high spin theories. So if we have such tower of, of spins, one may ask whether there are some simplifications which uh, appear when we combine these spins together. So in the case of massless high spins in flat space, with the uh, standard kind of frontal Lagrangian and gauge invariants, one may count degrees of freedom and uh, surprisingly with some way of counting you get zero. If you count a scalar, a real scalar plus in, infinite tower of massless high spins with two degrees of freedom, is it a function to define this sum, you get zero. And that may look surprising, but in fact that what also follows from looking at partition function for massless high spins, uh, just counting determinants and looking at the product of all deter determinants, ghosts and physical, you observe that there is a cancellation between uh, physical and ghost determinants and of, uh, each term has similarly determined the neighbor. And uh, that naive cancellation, of course, you can do it in different, you can organize this infinite sum in different ways, but the message is that getting this one as a result is actually the same as using this zeta function organization. So that's a description which should be consistent with underlying structure, underlying symmetry. Uh, and we are familiar with similar prescriptions in the context of string theory where you use, say, Masonic string, you use zeta function to define vacuum energy, and that is a particular prescription is required actually to be consistent with uh, agate space symmetries in a particular dimension. So something like that should happen here, and the main uh, the lesson is that one should be very careful about how it defines uh, theory of infinite number of fields <coughs> at the quantum level, so the utilization of summation of the spins should be consistent with symmetry. And again, in string theory, we kind of, we used to this idea, but we somehow bypass many complications by knowing uh, sort of that the answer, the right answer for string theory is actually using first quantized row G formulation, which avoids many quite intricate questions of how one should sum over infinite number of things. So, uh, to define what's conformal high string theory, let's start with uh, Beginnings of the main messages, kind of generalization of Maxwell theory and, and uh, wild theory, <coughs> you near, expanding near flat space, these are conformal theories with high spin uh, particles. Important point there is no dimensional coupling, so the coupling is dimensionless, so everything is fixed just by dimension of the field. So the number of derivatives in the interaction terms, for example, in wild theory, is fixed by the fact that H, uh, the gravitational has dimension zero. And uh, the symmetries here are differential and algebraic. Algebraic means you subtract traces, either in the course symmetric. That's the usual Wiles uh, symmetry in the case of graviton, but one could generalize it to any spin. So the physical fields can always be thought of uh, transverse traceless. If you, you, fix, you can fix a gauge where the fields are off shell transverse and traceless. Uh, so uh, the Lagrangian, if, if one uh, wonders what would be the Lagrangian consistent with the symmetry uh, and locality, one needs to introduce high derivatives in the kinetic term. It's essentially because you have product of transverse uh, projectors and spin s, you have s of them symbolically. Uh, and uh, to compensate for these inverse derivatives, to have local Lagrangian, you need to have uh, box and power s in the kinetic term. So that's the reason for this work derivative in the one theory. So that also tells us that the dimension of this conformal high spin field in general is 2 minus s. So for s equal 1, we have dimension 1 for Maxwell, then dimension uh, 0 for graviton, and then negative dimensions for uh, high spin fields. <coughs> so generically, Lagrangian will look like this. So uh, coupling is just dimension, dimensionless coupling, and then a number of derivatives is, is correlated to the number of fields and this dimension which you just mentioned. So here you have fixed number of derivatives given the number of fields, uh, given fixed number of spins. And then, uh, there will be some coefficients and then the sum of uh, all spins. So one may wonder what's the actual reaction for the such theory, and I'll discuss it later. There is a prescription how to define this action 
in kind of one shot, uh, viewing it as a, as a new theory. Um, so it, the bottom line is that for this conformal high spin theory, there is actually uh, a, a natural description for the, there is a definition of the action, and one can use this action uh, and study, say, or various observables, uh, for example, this matrix. One needs to define what it is, but I don't get to it. So before uh, studying the uh, interacting theory, again, we can look at free theory, and uh, here how the partition function essentially looks like, so there may be more derivatives, so this is just usual Laplacian, but of spin S fields, and again you have ghosts and uh, physical fields, and here there's no obvious cancellation, which I mentioned earlier, in the case of the usual massless sky spins, but if one again counts the number of degrees of freedom, in this case, uh, each spin, conformal high spin, has a number of degrees of freedom as of plus one, so this is two for Maxwell, six for wild gravity, etc. And again, there is a prescription which happens to be appearing everywhere in this theory, uh, that uh, if you start do the sum of the spins with particular cutoff and then drop all singular terms, which are exactly equivalent to some zeta function description, you again get zero. So the total number of degrees of freedom of partition function defined with this particular prescription happens to be uh, zero equal to one. And uh, that regularization, looking very artificial, actually is consistent with other regularizations which appear in the context of ADS, massive surprise criteria in ADS. And it's also, uh, it also implies that conformal high spin uh, partition function on sphere is also equal to 1. Uh, that is equivalent to that statement, provided there's no conformal anomaly. And indeed, uh, turns out that conformal anomaly in such theory, uh, for example, A coefficient is actually 0, summed up with that same prescription. So one would compute this A from the determinants and also under some assumptions, also coefficient C. And that's what one gets. It's polynomial in spin, <coughs> six order polynomial for A and C. And summed with that particular prescription, uh, one gets zero. So there are other, there is a different description for doing the sum leading to the same answer. So that's I'm just using this simplest uh, uh, simplest variant of it. So what that tells us is kind of very non-trivial. So you can have a uh, collection of fields uh, and still uh, uh, essentially vanish of conformal anomaly, which is the symmetry of this theory actually. So like in wild theory, you have conformal anomaly, wild theory by itself is inconsistent at one level. In this theory, you have cancellation of this conformal anomaly, that means uh, one will be refinedness, and that is achieved by combining the effect of infinite number of the Poisonic fields, but with some particular prescription how one do this combination. So the action, uh, to understand how to define the action for the interacting action for conformal high spins, one needs to go through, uh, one needs to return back to the beginning and uh, start with uh, scalar conformal field theory, free conformal field theory, um, for say complex scalar. In this theory there is conserved, on shell conserved and trace with high spin currents. So that's the, the, the basic statement. Uh, which actually implies the existence of uh, infinite dimensional symmetry, global symmetry of this free scale equation, essentially generated by conformal killing tensors. So conformal uh, vectors generate even conformal symmetry, but there is an infinite dimensional generalization of that. And that symmetry is in fact, um, it's essentially equivalent to the symmetry of high spin uh, fields in ADS, and it's also a symmetry which is gauged in conformal high spin theory. So it's underlying the symmetry of conformal Theory. How this comes about, one could look at this theory, introduce sources for these currents. I call this HS. Uh, these are fields which are sources for the currents uh, J. The curly J is just some operator as derivative. And then uh, the fact that these currents are conserved on shell uh, translates into certain symmetries of H, which are essentially these derivatives and algebraic symmetries. And in that sense, uh, if one do, does this integration, you can get some non-local function for this HS, which uh, may or may not have the symmetry. In fact, it will not have this uh, uh, this symmetry which I just uh, which I mentioned earlier. So the differential plus algebraic uh, anomalies will be breaking uh, it. But the local part of this induced action is log determinant. The local part, uh, the, the local UV 
divergent path, which essentially starts with Maxwell, Weil, etc. As we know, the singular part of this uh, log and determinant. It will have invariances and it will be local. So that's a natural candidate for this conformal type of action. In fact, uh, uh, so the fact that, uh, that uh, this H comes, uh, comes together with currents implies that they have uh, dimension 2 minus S, currents have dimension S plus 2, uh, and uh, in a sense they play the role of shadows, uh, shadow operators have that dimension 2 minus S in conformal theory, so in that sense this name shadow just refers to the dimension of this field. So in Victorial ADS CFT, uh, JS, these currents are due to conform to high spin fields in ADS, and this uh, gamma H, the, 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 the generating function for the correlations of these currents, primary operators, come out of the usual prescription from ADS, where we set up boundary conditions for massless high spins in ADS. That's some action which should appear in the ADS, and then the, this gamma should come out of that of path integral. And essentially, at the large, uh, the large end, uh, the leading order one gets just the value of this action evaluated with uh, usual uh, infrared cutoff in ADS will give you local, uh, it will contain singular part, which would be this induced action <coughs> in formal high spins, but plus non local terms. So, what I'm going to do is to concentrate on the singular part, logarithmically divergent part of this log determinant. <coughs> Uh, so it's very simple to write down, but in fact, compute it explicitly takes one needs to compute Feynman diagrams. Equivalently, it's just a some it's a top silly coefficient in this of this de uh, determinant, but it contains high derivatives because this JS is the operator with S derivatives. So the familiar low demand low spin examples are just to think of uh, scale in very decoupled to the metric and uh, also to the gauge field and uh, in this derivative. So then, uh, so the gauge field couples the usual current and uh, the metric couples the stress tensor in an improvement term. <coughs> and H0 prime is just a source for phi star phi since it's in zero. So in that case, this uh, determinant, uh, the logarithmic divergent term is familiar combination of Maxwell plus Y plus this first three uh, a zero prime term, but uh, this covariant action can actually be related to this action uh, which I started with, uh, which just contains uh, cubic interaction HS times phi phi, so there's only a linear terms in H by a field redefinition. So similar action will appear from my original study. So computing this action in general, one could then compute, start with it and compute everything of this. For example, this action is what actually is bosonic part of a for one conformal circuit gravity. And uh, one could compute uh, scattering of this there, provided we understand what is the what we mean by scattering of well gravity. So the strategy would be indeed to start with uh, scalar loops, so computing essentially this determinant expanded in power HS, so scale loop with insertion of these conserved currents, uh, of these current operators. 2, 3, F4, etc., and then uh, use these vertices to compute scattering amplitudes. And what will turn out that uh, after summation of all intermediate states, which will be infinite number of them, uh, the, the amplitude, scattering amplitude will actually be vanishing, and that can be understood as, van as consequence of global and formal high speed symmetry, which, be, which, is in, 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 which is part of this theory. Uh, so to, first, I'll illustrate this on simplest example. So suppose we have this external scale, as which I started with. We look at the scale as external uh, field coupled to these conformal high spins with, with the usual action, uh, with this high derivative action. So this is just kinetic term coupled to these scalars through this uh, uh, current. And we can scatter these scalars, uh, and they will be exchanging by this power of this HS, is just with this Propagator, which is determined by this uh, projector times the box Laplacian uh, power. So, uh, so essentially, this is interaction through this uh, with vet two vertices corresponding to conserved currents, like usual charge current, stress and etc., and then connected by this uh, one of a box, uh, one of a piece of the power S propagator. 
So the theory is has scale in there is an all dimensional parameter, so there is main the scattering amplitudes have very simple structure. The main uh, point is just to sum over or to do the summation of all this infinite number of in, in which propagate. And the result looks as follows. So in T channel the amplitude uh, is just uh, it's a function which is given by summation s plus one half uh, the general polynomials of the atom. It depends on ratio of S and uh, of Mandelstam variables. Unfortunately, S is uh, STU or Mandelstam, and this small, uh, this uh, um, Latin S is this is key. Then we scale the invariance, and then doing this sum with that same prescription which I mentioned earlier, which in D dimensions looks like this, D minus three over two, one half. One finds that F of Z, this function, is actually delta. The delta function of the of z minus uh, the minus one. So uh, the same result can be found by using generating function for Lejean polynomials to do the sum, and uh, this is kind of surprising result. The result uh, the, delta, the amplitude is just uh, delta function phase space. Of course, this theory is very weird. It's it's non-unitary theory with these strange propagators. But still, what uh, the message here is in fact that this this delta function if restricted to physical moment is actually zero. So, uh, the, for example, the amplitude where two scalars go into two scalars, uh, we get a teaching on that uh, expression, and then looking uh, at re real scalar amplitude, we consider physical momenta, we actually get a zero for this delta function. We don't have any support, so result is zero. In this case, in this case, uh, there is a cancellation between uh, non-trivial parts again, and uh, the total result again is zero. So, one can understand this, so again, the non-trivial, the, each individual exchange is non-trivial, but once summed up, we end up with trivial as matrix. And to understand, of course, this is something which, which is familiar in two dimensions, where there are high sort of charges implying integrability, but there there is some option of having non-trivial as matrix here in high dimensions, uh, there's not much we can do, but uh, so essentially that, that, that should be consequence of symmetry. And indeed, one can understand what, uh, uh, how this happens, why we get this constraint. Uh, so global conformal high spin symmetry uh, contains in particular these uh, hypertranslations. It's essentially usual translation generalized to rank R uh, So. This is transformation of a scalar, external legs are scalars here. And uh, uh, looking at what this symmetry implies for the amplitude, one learns that the amplitude should be proportional to delta functions, which should have general form like this. And uh, then scale invariance essentially meaning that we don't have dimensional, dimensional parameters here, we can the scale momentum, the amplitude should stay the same, uh, implies that the amplitude should actually be zero. So this is very short. Uh, um, uh, argument, uh, which I'm not explaining what, how, why that happens, but uh, the bottom line is this regularization which we use to summation of the spins is actually consistent with this symmetry. So symmetry implies the amplitude is zero. So much, uh, it's more than trivial to, to, to get the same results by scattering now physical states. So uh, what I did before was external scale is coupled to conformal high spins, but now I want to scatter and formal high spins themselves, starting with uh, Lagrange, uh, the interactive Lagrangian. And uh, here we first need to determine this vector explicitly this in, from this induced action and then compute the sketch. For example, we can sketch the four vectors or gravitons, etc. So the, uh, here are more explicit formulas for how these currents look like. Uh, so one can define this by linear phi differentiated in certain way and then take x equals prime. And uh, that's the explicit expression for the card. The here notation I just mu s means and the run s. So we start with that action uh, and uh, do loop, uh, do integrate over phi and get induced action for h, taking only singular uv part uh, of each diagram. We took, for example, the um, uh, the loop with two, two legs in the visualization. You extract a pole, you get this kinetic term for the uh, spin s. Uh, Field. Same thing for three-point function. And algebraically, it's, 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 it's kind of a long computation, but 
simplest example would be 1, 1, S, uh, two vectors, uh, two vector characters in XPNS, and that's how the cubic determined Lagrangian look like. Again, there's always S derivatives here, um, just on dimensional grounds, but the algebraic structure is, in, is involved. For example, a 1, 1, 2 vertex is just a usual Maxwell uh, couple to graviton vertex. That's exactly the same what it is in the of conformal graviton and couple to Maxwell. Quartic vertex, Again, same diagram, say for the four vectors, you get just local h mu. Here, you can't have only any derivatives, so usual h mu squared. In fact, it, uh, there is also a scalar, trivial scalar, like auxiliary scalar h mu squared, which, uh, which in, in fact appears with, in combination with this quartic term. The exchange of this h0 uh, combined with quartic vertex like this, will actually they cancel each other. We want to just integrate over h0. So that's useful for, for the future. The so same uh, more complicated expression is found for other vertices. And now we can look at this matrix. So, so what is this matrix in this conformal high speed? So for spin one, there is no question. We know what is the usual, uh, the vector has usual kinetic terms, so it's a physical uh, article with two helicities. But for other fields, uh, we need some prescription. And the prescription which we use is the following. So, we just consider imputated Green's functions and then uh, attach to them asymptotic states, which are just physical to helicity, two degrees of freedom, massless high speeds. So, uh, equivalently, what one can do, one can start with classical action, find classical solution within boundary conditions, and then expand the powers of H in, H in and the read of 3.4 point, etc. And then uh, the equation for H in H, uh, the infield is, is this one, but one can choose a particular solution here. And uh, like in usual uh, uh, wild graviton, the equation, the back equations, <coughs> they are four derivatives, but they are solved in particular by just by reaching tensor equals zero, so or by Einstein graviton. So one can choose that particular solution as a symbolic state. So that will give you on uh, a symbolic state as usual physical uh, real estate so that's this matrix we want to consider. So uh, uh, that prescription is non-trivial in the sense that it need not be the same as what one gets from careful definition of quantum mechanics and uh, transition amplitude. But uh, for this uh, restriction to that kind of asymptotic state, it makes no sense. So, uh, so what do we actually get? So you exchange uh, uh, the amplitudes with these vertices, which I mentioned earlier. You see one on S vertex in momentum space connected with these propagators, and uh, if for spin two exchange while well, graviton one gets um, the following expression. So first, all non MHV amplitudes vanish, and for MHV, uh, so here I assume the helicities are all a, uh, in, all incoming momentum, and uh, uh, they all treated symmetrically. Uh, one gets uh, here and there. It, so, for example, the, the ST channel amplitude look like this for exchange of spin 2. For spin 4, same story, so we just take the spin 4 propagator and here written explicitly connected with the corresponding uh, three point vertices, and that's the expression which one gets. So, what one sees here is a, again still in there in polynomials with the four powers of US and the four powers of the denominator and numerator. And generic structure happens to be the following. So there is some coefficient for exchange of spin s with uh, vectors as asymptotic states. Uh, there is some coefficient depending on spin. Then there is a power st, say power s, so the power of uh, controlling <coughs> the correlate with spin. And then there is a polynomial uh, of order s minus two of, in, of t of s inverted. Uh, and that polynomial happens to be, in fact. Uh, Jacobi polynomial of is labeled 4 and 0 in this particular case. So that's how explicit it looks like. Um, so this PS is, it is uh, maybe a bit more so it's a psychogenetic function. But this Jacobi relation to Jacobi polynomial is, is actually not surprising and it, it generalizes to other cases. So what do we get? So uh, using this uh, result, what could sum uh, over spins now? Using generating function for Jacobi polynomials. So, using the uh, introducing z uh, extra uh, variable in the summation prescription, and then taking z to one, one can argue that 
and the result is actually having this uh, form. So sigma is just the part of the amplitude. The total amplitude is sigma s of x plus sigma s of 1 minus minus x, which is the other argument u over s. Uh, so that's the result for summation. So the, here I'm assuming generic momentum, you know, all the functions kind of are, are meted. And uh, adding the sigma of x to sigma 1 minus minus x, one finds 0. So essentially this, the claim is that model is delta function which actually vanished for physical momentum. The total amplitude is 0, just in, like in this scaly case. And that generalizes to, uh, to other asymptotic, to other external states. So we looked at this too scaling of this graviton explicitly. And uh, essentially the general structure of the scaling amplitude for helices lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, lambda 4 uh, is controlled by well, uh, it's controlled by uh, partial wave expansion in, uh, in the momentum uh, states. And that's a formula by Jacob and Wick. And uh, it essentially contains these Jacobi polynomials uh, with arguments which, with, with numbers which depend on helicities. Uh, so this is in the, uh, uh, the scaffold plane. So this Jacobi lambda depends on cosine theta and S dependence in S channel is controlled by this function. Uh, and in the present case, this function actually is also simple. In the S dependence is controlled just by dimensions. So, uh, Essentially, this J is identified with spin exchange in the, in the, in the, in the given channel. So this formula applies directly. Uh, the details of the theory is, is hidden in this function f of s. And this function in our case is just power of s, uh, with power being controlled by dimensions of the fields. The delta is 2 minus uh, spin in this particular case. And uh, times some coefficient and time some numerical coefficient depending on the, on the, the difference of helicity. So here, this formula actually, I'm assuming helicity lambda 1, lambda 2 are coming and lambda 3, lambda 4 are coming. It's a different wavelength than the previous scheme. So then going through uh, special cases, one sees that that's exactly what we found for scalars. The Lejean polynomial is just this Jacobi for 0, 0 arguments. And uh, spin 1, we have this Jacobi of 4, 0. We check again what we found explicitly. And for 2 2 scattering, it will be 8 0 Jacobi uh, with particular f. And again, going through summation of spins, in this case, with all coefficients, uh, the, the explicit value of the coefficient coming off from the Lagrangian, we find that, uh, say, this uh, scattering amplitude sum of spins is again having this expression, which is kind of polynomial of the argument plus some log term. But some T and U channel sum vanish. And uh, this is not the end of the story. We need to add also, uh, in the case of spin 2, uh, yes, 2 to 2 vertex, contact vertex, which is, say, present in the wild graviton case, in the wild theory, plus exchanges of spin 0 and spin 2. But when they are summed added together, one finds that the result is also separately 0. So the, this non trivial part of high spin exchanges plus Low spin exchanges zero to vanish, and that should generalize to other uh, to high spin in particles in external lives, uh, where one needs to split essentially exchanges. For if you have SSS as uh, scattering, then uh, as uh, exchanges of spin bigger than S will be summed to this Jacobi, through this Jacobi polynomial, uh, and then they will need to analyze lower spins, etc. So uh, the bottom line is that the, the conjecture is that the full uh, X matrix in this theory, this four-point function, the four-point X matrix is vanishing, and that should follow as in this key example from the global symmetry, global underlying symmetry. So here I just sketch how the symmetry looks like in general. If one combines the spins, uh, it follows essentially from construction uh, of coupling with this external scalar to this conformal high spin in through the conserved currents. So that action has symmetry, and this symmetry can be written in terms of this R product, my L style product, if one combines spins with auxiliary vector u into this um, hx of u, and then considers, uh, defines products and commutators and anti-commutators in the usual, usual way. 
And this, this, there are two symmetries in differential and algebraic, namely analog diffeomorphisms and ray subtraction while symmetry, and they generically look like this. And scalar transforms also in a similar way. And that's what I mentioned earlier when I was discussing these hyper, hyper translations, they are part of that uh, symmetry for the scale. So there is a uh, differential part, so the delta is, contains part which doesn't depend on the field and part which depends linear in the field, and this is just like usual if uh, i for the gravity. There is a part which is derivative part of linear in H. Uh, and uh, the, the global part is the part which is proportional to H itself, and that's what constrains the amplitude. So the differential part is just the H symmetry, but the there is a global part if we choose uh, particularly this epsilon in a particular form, like say conformal killing or conformal intensive, then one gets the dual symmetry. So that should lead to triviality as matrix. So we, we didn't discuss this general argument, but essentially it should be similar to the argument in flat space, in this case, case. Let me now turn to, in remaining, I guess, 10 minutes, I turn to massless high speed in flat space. So this is conjectural theory. We know some bits of it, and uh, we would like to understand what we can learn from what we know. So this is two derivative unitary theories. So kinetic are normal, and so usual, say Maxwell, usual Einstein gravity, etc. Uh, and we would like to ask whether there is a gauge invariant in interacting theory, and what should be underlying symmetry. It's not clear there is an underlying symmetry. There is no candidate for it. Global symmetry, but linearized symmetry should be for each spin. There should be a usual gauge symmetry. So this should be stuck with the usual frontal fields for each spin. It will be infinite power of such spins, and uh, if there is a global symmetry, this matrix again should be constrained. And in fact, uh, that's a usual uh, uh, claim that there, there are no global theorems, etc., and they should really uh, constrain the theory so that it should really exist. But uh, I would like to understand whether this is true and what are the assumptions, what are all the assumptions. Reason why this is interesting because it may be thought as some probably some limit of this in high spin theory in ADS. Generically, we expect that you have some theory in curved space, you should have, you should be able to take a limit in flat space. Usually, and there are claims that you can't do that because this theory is not analytic and it's not a concept, etc. But again, one needs to look at assumptions and whether this is actually true. Also, the other argument is again, string theory, maybe there is some way of taking this zero tension limit, which should lead to some theory in flat space. So, uh, again, this theory starts with these standard kinetic terms. We should have gauge symmetry, and then we can construct this theory order by order in say, a procedure, namely adding cubic terms, can modify transformational order of the field, etc. And trying to see where this procedure can lead somewhere. In fact, there is lots of known about this theory at the level of cubic interactions, and uh, they were constructed in like con gauge first, by Bex and Bex and Brink, and then Mitsayev uh, constructed also looked at cubic interaction, uh, determined the coupling points in front by requiring point carry invariance. Um, and uh, essentially, cubic interactions and couplings, these are the couplings, they are known. And we can uh, try to look at this matrix with these cubic interactions and uh, these couplings. A very important point is that compared to previous theory, which I discussed, conformal high spins, here there is a dimensional parameter called L. Uh, here the fields have dimension 1. Uh, this is 1 over G squared with dimensionless coupling in front. But there, is, uh, there are many derivatives in interaction terms, and they are balanced by scale L, because phi has dimension 1 now. So uh, using this uh, known cubic interaction, we can compute just expected exchanges and see what we get. And uh, I'll skip most of the details. So it's essentially the story about how one writes kinetic term, uh, Fronsel term in this general form. And uh, in a gauge, this is just usual equations, Laplace equations for each spin. And then these are cubic vertices. So we looked at in this paper with uh, Dmitry Panoya, we looked at uh, scattering of spin zero particles. Spin zero here is a part of physical spectrum, so it has usual kinetic term, box kinetic term. And it's coupled to two spins, and then uh, one could look at exchange of spin S, 
with scale has been on external lines. And the result, uh, we need to use a propagator. Propagator is, is depends on in this unit A, with this auxiliary vector, it depends on Chebyshev's polynomial. And that's what actually appears also in the exchange evidence. So suppose we scatter two scalars with the exchange of spin S. What we find is uh, the scattering amplitude will be some, there will be summation with all spins exchange, and the coefficients here, uh, they are expressed in terms of this Chebyshev polynomial. It's time scale coupling constants for this 0, 0, S coupling. And one of the rest is just usual propagator, which is one of the box in this case, all fields have the usual propagator. So, summing over spins uh, here is actually convergent and it leads to uh, result, uh, the resulting function of kinematic variables is non trivial. It's a Bessel combination of Bessel functions. And it's non trivial because here there's no scale in there. So, the L is a dimensional, uh, dimensional parameter or length, dimensional length. And that's the result for this exchange. It, it, it contains these Bessel functions. And these Bessel functions. Uh, imply that in the region limit or in fixed angle scattering you get exponential growth uh, of the amplitude, suggesting some UV problems, but that's not yet the total amplitude, it's just exchange part, but there's a non-trivial quartic interaction there. Anyway, so compared to string, usual string expressions where we exchange massive tower, of, we, where we get soft, soft uh, UV behavior, here the UV behavior appears to be essentially uh, actually blowing up. Now, what about scale of ethics? So here, uh, four-point ethics. So unfortunately, this theory, so the, here the knowledge stops because we don't really know what is ethics. It's not, it's not yet constructed. It's not clear whether it's actually local. And, uh, but it, if it exists, uh, it can actually soften this behavior and maybe it can completely cancel the exchange. Uh, that seems possible only when this ethics will be non-local. And that would be one of the messages. But one could try to see what this vertex could be using a similar expression for the scale of vertex four-point function, which was constructed from ADS-CFT logic in, uh, in this paper in ADS. And then starting with the ADS expression, we can take naive limit and see what we get. Again, I will skip the details, but the bottom line is with some, uh, the, the guess what one can get in flat space will again be some vessel function. So in principle, similar structure. And uh, there could be some cancellation between this quartic contribution exchange. Important message, important point is that this quartic vertex is very non trivial. It contains infinite number of uh, derivatives, it's, it's not effectively non local vertex compared to what conformal high speed, which I discussed earlier. This has to do with the fact that we have this dimensional parameter in the game. Uh, so we also looked at some one loop diagrams and they are exponentially divergent, which is not unrelated to this exponential growth of exchange. So we also looked with, uh, in uh, work with Rado, we looked at also at uh, uh, 000S, three level scattering. And the reason is that uh, here one could look at constraints of gauge invariance. So one can change, do gauge transformation on the mass leg and see whether one could uh, uh, maintain gauge invariance and import interaction vectors. And uh, so it's essentially the strategy is to solve the gauge invariance conditions, on shell gauge invariance conditions, and balance uh, the, uh, balance the, uh, exchange, uh, the exchange contribution against the uh, vertex. So it's the same logic as one could use in the scale electrodynamics and determine the, what should be the quartic, uh, what should be the quartic term. Uh, knowing on the cubic term and requiring gauge invariance of exchange of the total amplitude. So, uh, looking at this, the bottom line is that we can generalize this, uh, my, the previous discussion of scalar scattering to this 0,0s scattering. The expressions again are, uh, are related to this Chebyshev polynomial now with the index, um, uh, the extra powers of s. The, the, uh, yeah, the structure is similar, but it reflects the fact that we, we have one S uh, leg, so there's a polarization vector here. And then uh, turns out that one could indeed construct local expression for the vertex requiring gauge invariance. The cases of uh, external leg being two and four, but not either and four. So in 2K is spin S, is spin in, uh, when the leg, the leg is spin two, one finds some quartic expression, uh, explicitly uh, the expression for the, for the quartic vertex 
again in terms of vessel functions and the embryo seems okay. Uh, S4 is the same, but for S bigger than 4, the local solution is not to exist. And similar result with found by Tarone earlier. So that abstraction, so the message is that uh, it doesn't seem to be possible to construct gauge invariant amplitude with local four um, for interaction vertex. So similar abstraction comes from Weinberg so theorem that if you consider four five point functions. And uh, similar conclusions were derived from uh, assuming this CFW constructability in these papers. So the message seems to be maybe one needs to relax locality assumption, but then we are kind of in very unknown territory. So whether this theory exists or not is not clear. But here are my conclusions. Uh, so we sort of starting to learn how to do quantum computations in theories. We need a number of masters high in fields. And here is one important lesson is to be aware of symmetries and how one defines quantum theory to should be consistent with the symmetries. There are some remarkable simple observations about uh, consequence of the large symmetry, namely degrees of freedom being zero, total number of degrees of freedom being zero, partition function being one, simplest uh, ones, and in conformal high spin theory that means also cancellation of conformal anomalies. And also we observe there are uh, trivial S matrix uh, if we sum over all spins. Now, flat space uh, theory, uh, high spin theory in flat space remains an enigma, and, but motivation is really, it's, it could be some kind of simplified version of high spin theory in EDS, for which we still don't know the full action, and uh, don't know how to efficiently compute loop corrections, but the reason why we need the flat space was precisely to learn that. And one message could be that we need to learn to look at some more intricate theories, maybe the relaxing. Maybe ADS theory may tell, tell us how that should be done. Thank you. Thank you. 